one of the things that we see in the story of Anna and Simeon is that they were having an experience of the divine. So one of the questions we thought we would start this service with is where have you seen God today? Seeing God in your midst is one thing, speaking it aloud for all to hear is completely different. The world needs more good news and we are not called to be silent. So if we were going to ask you to do something, we thought we better ask each other to do it too. So I'll start. Tanya, where have you seen God today? Well, I am sitting in the meeting house, which here in Hollis, our folks know that our entire uh, our entire works are under construction and we're coming near to the end. Um, but coming in today, I spoke with a couple different gentlemen, a couple of the workers here. And um, one of them was very accommodating. And I think um, of God as being very accommodating. Of, I was asking him to shuffle some things around and, um, and he was very happy to do that and accommodating of me. So that was a bit of grace that I needed <laughs> this morning. And then I had a conversation with another worker who um, has had to shuffle other things around, but was just reflecting on his hope for um, the glimmers of light that he's seeing for the end of the pandemic, the, the vaccine, but also talking about the hope for when this is all behind us. And I think anytime I hear hope expressed and people leaning forward, I see God in that, into their ability to see a future that's better than the present, but also acknowledging the goodness of this moment. And I also think there's a part of God's grace that says we get to have a hand in it, mm. that we get to have a part in it. So the shuffling around and the whatever they can influence to bring that hope and that, pro, you know, that progress forward that's also part of, of working with God and being a part of God is that we get our hand in it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Good. So mine is um, much more ridiculous and mundane, but was just so, I was so touched. Um, I have been up here in Maine. I'm at my folks house. And since basically since March and I've gone up and down when I needed to, but my car was supposed to be inspected back in November and it's still running around with its November sticker on it. So I knew I was coming down to Massachusetts if for no other reason, you know, for church stuff somewhere around the 24th. So I called the car dealership and I said, I need to get my car inspected. And they said, well, we don't book appointments for that. And I was just like, oh, great. That's just what I need. So I explained to the woman just the challenges I was facing and that I really had a really small window. So just if she could kind of steer me to the best time to get there so I could wait the least, that would be really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden there was this massive typing on the other end of the phone. And then she said, oh yes, on such and such a date at such and such a time, you're going to have a tire rotation or something something and I'm like I am and she said yes because <laughs> that takes the same amount of time with the same text in the same bay and when you get here we'll discover I made a terrible mistake oh. I just was so profoundly grateful that she was just human with me and was like let me get creative and yeah. that's the thing that when I think of God coming into this world to solve a problem Mm. there's nothing there's no rule that will hold God but then there is no limit to the creativity that God will come up with I love that so we can solve a problem together child yeah it's always and it's the creativity it's out of the box it's like I would never have come up with that but that's perfect yeah yep. <laughs> yep. and I just was and there was that also there's that part that I think that God does that sees us as who we are, you know, flawed and frail and frazzled. And I really, really need an appointment. Yeah. And she's willing to just say, yeah, to, to knowingly set herself up to have made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. It was lovely. So the other thing that I thought as I was, you know, thinking like, oh, I'm going to be recorded. I better have something good to say um, mm -hmm. was how hard it is to do this, to answer this question 
when you don't have a lot of humans in your life, when we're so limited with the number of people. Because, you know, we're, I'm in a beautiful part of Maine. It's a rural part of Maine. And I, could, I can honestly say I see God every day because of the sunrise over the water and the ducks and the, you know. But that didn't satisfy me for answering this question. I think we need people to really get that full answer. And yeah. it's weird in the pandemic that I can't answer it as readily without people. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because as I was reflecting on it, even just in the last week, we had a very successful, um, the Luminaria event, which is a relatively new tradition here in Hollis. Um, but the Luminaria stroll, which wound up being postponed from Saturday night to Sunday, um, but they kept the chili supper on because we, we have a chili supper and they did it out on the front walk of the church. So they had the chili supper on Saturday night. So there, there were people milling about down here. And just, I mean, so yes, that sense of community, people coming together and there was God and there was such a spirit of joy, even though we all had to stay distance from each other, it was just great to see each other and say, hey, you know, get your cup of chili. And then the following night they had a bake sale because they had bake sale goods left over from the night before. So that again, people milling about the town, appreciating the beauty of the tea lights and the luminaria that had been set up. Um, but also just the fellowship and the holding to certain traditions, even though they're only four or five year old traditions, right. people saying, this is what we've come to understand as normal for us and doing that little bit of normalcy, even though it was different because we usually serve chili in the hall <laughs> and it was outside this year beneath um, canopies. But yeah, just that, that desire to um, keep things normal and the encounter with the holy as we encountered each other. Right. Yeah. Right. And part of God's story through scripture, right, is that I will, I have been faithful in the past. I will be faithful in the future. This commitment to that the past has a right to influence where we go in the future, that we take yeah. the goodness from the past and we bring it with us into the future. Yes. So, mm. so that's where I saw God this week. That's where you saw God this week. And we'd love to hear from other folks what they thought to answer that question.